hello lovely people welcome back to my channel welcome back to open roads and theatre seats today we are back with a new review for a show a classic if you will the lovely my fair lady so if you want to know my thoughts and feelings on this show stick around and we'll get into it in two whole seconds <laughs> Yes, that's right we are going for a classic the current UK and Ireland tour of my fair lady it is a show that's been around for a very long time I am very late to the party on this show but the tour decided to happen and I just happened to be in a place where it was on and I was like okay let's go for it let's buy yourself a ticket let's do it and I did. I went to the excuse me, the Bristol Hippodrome, um, had a glorious time, and here are my thoughts. The production that I saw, the UK tour, is the same production that was at the London Coliseum um, last year, the year before last. Not good at timings, um, and after that run it decided to do a UK tour it got announced I got very excited about the cast and I knew I wanted to go and see it on tour now the thing is I do not know or I did not know much about this show beforehand I've never seen the film version I've never seen any iteration on stage it was my first introduction to the world of my fair lady apart from the fact I knew some of the songs I knew getting married in the morning I knew wouldn't it be lovely <laughs> um I also knew that it was based on a play by the name of Pygmalion which was written by George bear with got no George Bernard Shaw I didn't actually write it in my notes um but to me the play Pygmalion always makes me think of uh the film with Lindsay Lohan by the name of Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen iconic iconic 2000s film um I didn't really know a lot I was going in pretty much blind which is really bad to say when you are going to see a show which has such a uh, like following and such a place in many people's hearts and I was just I just left feeling so like happy and just it was just so good this version is directed by Bartlett Sher and it was just a delight to watch the set the set was one of my favorite things i have seen in a very long time it was designed by michael jürgen and it was so ingenious for the majority of the show it takes place in higgins's house and the way that it is done is just so clever it works on like a revolve i'm guessing um so at one point you can have like the living area or in the library above and then it turns slightly and you've got the bathroom it turns slightly again you've got the hallway and the top of the stairs it was just so cleverly done so brilliant and it also moved forwards and backwards so when they weren't at Higgins house it could be moved back and the curtain could be put in front of it it was very geniusly done and just beautifully lovely to look at I should have said something like aesthetically pleasing there we go it was <laughs> and yeah it was just absolutely brilliant pair that with costumes by Catherine Zuber 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 um and wigs by Tom Watson it was just a feast for the eyes it was so beautiful to look at and yeah just beautiful creatively collectively a joy to see 
Um, there were elements of the story which I was like, mm. and for me, living in a world where everything should have a happy ending, I was like, oh, at the end of the, the, the musical, mainly because I feel like in the back of my head I had a different ending involved and it just didn't occur. I didn't really know the story going in, so it's not like I missed a plot point, it's just how I thought it would end, it did not end that way. But there is that. Moving on to the cast, and I apologise for my face keeps changing colour, but I've got electronic notes right here, and so I have to keep clicking it so it can help me out, but obviously it's going to change the lighting slightly, so sorry about that. Um, but the cast, let's get into the cast. Um, they were really, really good. They were so brilliant to watch from the amazing ensemble all the way up to the named, big named cast members. Some people were new to me, some people I have seen previously or heard of recently. And let's start with our Henry Higgins. So we actually had an understudy on for our show, so we had Higgins played by Paul Westwood and he was so good at his role. I feel like this show doesn't particularly have like an antagonist, it doesn't have the bad guy in it um, and definitely Higgins isn't the bad guy but he has those moments when you're just like <laughs> If I was there, I would be going, mm, bye bye. I got to, I got to leave you for a minute because you're infuriating me. He's one of those kind of characters. Um, it was played so well by Paul. Paul played it absolutely perfectly, and yeah, it was just a really good performance from him. I also kind of want to return before the tour is over, which isn't very long, um, and see the wonderful Michael Xavier because I kind of feel like he would ace it. Um, so maybe I can persuade my mum to go and watch it with me in Birmingham. However, the Queen Bee, the pivotal person in this show, the fair lady herself, Eliza is played by Charlotte Kennedy. Now I have been aware of Charlotte's work for a while um, but I think this is the first time actually seeing her in the flesh and oh my god her voice, ha, ah, beautiful, lovely to listen to. There is something about her like vocal work, it's just oh, I could just sit and listen to her, well, I'll probably sing and, sit and listen to her singing like the pages out of yellow pages it was just so beautiful and yeah i'm so glad that i finally got the chance to listen to her sing and hopefully it won't be too long before i hear her again also in the cast we have two former soap stars should we call them um they are literally named on the website as eastender zone no, no, and emmerdale's own no, no, no. um we have playing the role of um, Alfred P. Doolittle, Eliza's dad. We have Adam Woodyatt, formerly known as Ian Beale from EastEnders, and we also have Colonel Pickering, played by Emmerdale's own John Middleton. Now, for me, they both were really, really good at their performances. It took I me mean, actually a while to work out who John was. I was like, no, I can't see anyone from Emmerdale. But it did click second act and I was like, okay, got it, sorted. But then I didn't have that problem with um, Adam Wood yet. For me, I just couldn't get out of my head and it's because I grew up in my like late teens, early 20s, watching a lot of EastEnders. For me, it was kind of hard to push into the back of my mind that it wasn't Ian Beale on the stage, it was Adam Wood yet playing a role because it was just, it's just ingrained in my brain. They both played their parts excellently but for me it was just a really hard thing to get out of my head but that's just me. Playing the role of Freddie um, who is kind of the love interest um, 
Tom. Leggings. Tom was so delightful to listen to. He obviously has his main solo song on the street where you live. And I just like, I he, he melted my heart. I was like, okay, this is lovely. His voice was stunning and he just commanded that stage for that number. Um, it was very interesting in the interval to look through his previous shows and find out that actually playing the same role in the West End version was his first show, his first debut and it's going to be really exciting to see where he goes next because he just, he just was definitely a highlight of the show for me. He was just so lovely to listen to um, and I hope he goes far. I will be keeping an eye. Finally, I just want to mention the role of Mrs. Pierce, the housekeeper, if you will, um, played by the amazingly vocally talented Leslie Garrett. Um, obviously, to most, she is this amazing opera star, um, and for this role, she is the housekeeper. For me, personally, for the vocal talent she's got, I feel like she was underutilized um you kind of heard her a little bit during one of the songs that she was part of like a group song but to have that talent and then have her doing not so much singing just was a bit confusing she's like an iconic singer and then you don't really use her as a singer i don't know i don't know it just felt a bit odd to me. <laughs> she is an icon, she is a queen, um, but she wasn't really heard. So that was an interesting choice, but it was the choice of the casting people. As previously mentioned, the ensemble were absolutely incredible. Um, some were names that I have seen previously, um, including the onstage twins, including, including Bethany Huckle. I've been an OG fan of her since the half sixpence days <laughs> and will always enjoy watching her out on a stage. Um, a highlight for me for the ensemble is the getting, no, get me to the church on time where the set opened up, it was this amazing, crazy performance. Pretty much the whole ensemble were right there on that stage doing something or other and I just didn't know where to put my eyes. It was a vision in slight craziness, let's be honest. Um, there was a lot of Catherine's amazing costumes on the stage, kind of reminiscent of her work from Moulin Rouge and yeah it was, I didn't know where to look, it's one of those, <laughs> if you sit there and you're kind of geeing you up to see like a, a, a nice chilled out classic-esque show, that song comes along and bam, you're in something else for a good five minutes. I literally was on the phone to my friend as I left, I was like, I don't actually know what I saw for that like that whole song it was it was something else so long story short I actually really enjoyed my time watching this show sitting in a theatre the whole thing is so visually and audibly aesthetically pleasing it was like a warm three hour hug it was just so lovely um yeah it kind of reminded me that there are so many classics out there that i haven't had the chance to go and see or just kind of ignored and this is definitely the year that i think that i'm going to try my hardest to try and watch a few more as i film this i'm actually going to see another one of the classics tomorrow which i ironically is also a Bartlett share production so play some guesses if you want to play that game um and yeah I'm very excited this is definitely going to be the year that I see the classics whether they be on stage or on film 
let me know your favourite classics down below. Also, just wanted to mention on the My Fair Lady production thing, um, I 100% loved and wanted to know how it ended um, as the set turned there was this little unspoken undiscovered uncharted little relationship kind of going on uh, between one of the housemaids and a police officer I kind of am 100% invested in their story. It kind of progresses as the show goes on through the set changes and I just loved it because obviously sometimes you have set changes and there's just a bit of music as it goes but this was like something to watch on the screen and I was just like, I love it, I love it. Perfectly done, love it. I just want to know, did they end up together? I don't know, did they get married? Did she leave? service i don't know this is the question i need to know the answer to because i'm like what happened <laughs> i do love a happy ending so i really hope that something went well for them um but that's just a it's been playing in the back of my head since i saw it and i saw this show like over a week ago now i just i need to know so somebody please tell me in the club please tell me <sighs> all right she's back anyway there we go my full ramblings about my fair lady in just under 20 minutes you are very welcome um have you seen this production if you haven't please try and get yourself a ticket i believe there is two venues left birmingham hippodrome and also liverpool bear with She's got a computer right here. Why not use it? So close, but so far. We've got Birmingham Hippodrome, which is Wednesday the 8th of March to Sunday the 19th of March. And also Manchester Palace Theatre between the 22nd of March and the 1st of April. There we go. That is everything. Please go and check out this show if you haven't already and it's coming anywhere near you. It's so lovely, a great watch. And just just highlights how classic the classics are and why they are classic anyway i've said classic too many times i'm going to leave you here thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed and i hope you come back for next time i love you all lots and i'll see you next time bye